I think what Face Temper and Banks were looking for was a guy that they really liked, which was Zuma. They didn't really like me. They didn't really like Aix either. They were just trying to find a guy that they really liked. It was all about an opinion at the end of the day. Who they really liked is what mattered to them. I am, I'm actually Italian. I'm 25% Italian. So it was very obvious to me that Banks and Temper didn't like me being the face of their team, even though I actually was getting them the results. So what they decided to do was give me a second team instead. So I was grateful for the second team, but we didn't really have a good opportunity to make a good team because of the timing of the second team. So it kind of fucked me over in a way and it forced me to retire. So it was a really tough decision that I had to deal with. And then I met Yannette and then that was a great thing for me too. But when I said that to them, Tommy didn't like my answer when they were like, we want to make Ix the captain. What do you think about that? And they wanted me to say, they wanted me to say, oh, I think that's a great decision because Aix is now the GOAT and he's the best. But I didn't say that. I said, I don't think Aix is in a good state of mind to play. And I think I was right about that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I thought I was right or wrong about it because they didn't like that answer and that was probably why they didn't fuck with me. I think that they just didn't want to fuck with me because of that answer because after that happened, it was very clear that they didn't fuck with me. Do you feel that they had better opinions to put in versus keeping you? I feel like sometimes it's just what they want on paper, not just pure jealousy. I, who knows? I mean, dude, they never explained it to me. They never told me why. I don't know, even to this day. And that's why I still have this weird animosity because I just don't know what the fuck happened. There was never a clear black and white conversation that was had. But the thing that really made it angry, like the thing that really got me pissed wasn't the fact that I got dropped off the phase team and got a second team. And they made Aix the captain over me. The thing that got me pissed, honestly, was leading me on for three years. Making it sound like I'm going to run the team again. I'm going to run the team again. You're going to be the guy. You're going to be the guy. And then after three years, they told me I would be the guy. And then they took it away from me after telling me it directly to my face. So that's what really got me mad, honestly. I wasn't really mad about getting dropped. I, I, I held that on the chin. Like, for me to drop my ego when I was the guy at the top making Dynasty godlike winning plays and godlike winning moments and to get dropped that didn't really kill my ego i held that shit on the chin i was like all right whatever i'll try to do it again and see what i could do what really got me mad was waiting for three fucking years and then them telling me to my face after i waited for three years that i'm gonna play and then they never let me play that's what really got me mad that's the thing that i still to this day never had a conversation about with face clan with banks with temper with any of them they never wanted to talk to me about it i've, I've tried to have combos um and then instead of having combos, I sit here on Twitch and it's probably going to end up happening soon. I would imagine that when I see face temper in person, because he's definitely affiliated with COD now and he's doing a lot more COD stuff. We'll probably have a combo about this and put it to bed and keep it pushing. But I still to this day have trauma over that where I'm just like, what could have been, dude? You know, it would have been nice. Like I was very aggressive and I was very confident and I wanted to compete with Nade Shot and build the scene. As a player, like I thought Nate Shot and Optic needed this rival, and I felt like I matched Nate in a lot of ways. I wasn't the best player, but I knew how to put on a front on a camera, grind out content, and still get wins at the same time and do it for a big brand. And I, I really felt like they needed a rival. Like I always thought it would be awesome if somebody could rival everything that Nate, Optic, and Seth, and all those guys were building. So I always wanted to do that so bad. And I never really had a true answer from the people that put me on about it. So it always kind of just really bothered me back then. So now it's like, it's pretty cool, honestly, that now it makes a lot of sense for me. Because I was sitting there and I'm trying to like make my way back up in challengers and get back in the league and prove why I deserve to be here and all this stuff. But then it actually started to fall through in front of my face. I start going through the pull-up training, guys. And, you know, my hands are all fucked up. And I, I just couldn't figure it out. But then I was like, okay, as I started doing more of the training, it was very clear to me I shouldn't be competing anymore. I got to step down. I'm definitely holding people back. That's the first step. I got to admit it to myself. So let me admit that to myself. We got to take a step back. Let's calm down. Let's stop playing Call of Duty. We shouldn't play anymore. We should let other people just do their thing. Like I, I shouldn't be a player. What should I be? I don't know. Should I be a coach? Should I be a general manager? I don't, I don't know what my future is. I don't know where I'm going to go. I have no idea what the fuck's going to happen. But after I retired, a lot more things made sense. The training got a lot better. 
Yo, we don't we don't care about you doing a cocaine line. I'm actually drunk. I'm sorry, bro. I hope that you could keep it to yourself and enjoy and have some fun. But listen, man, it's like six o'clock in the morning for you, dog. I think you should start re relaxing and going to bed, man. <laughs> you gotta reset. You gotta reset a bit, dude. You've been doing this for a minute in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that phase. If they reduce it to a small group like they did ten years ago, that would be a great thing for their brand. Uh, they had a great thing 10 years ago, and it was a small circle. But it was an aggressive circle, though. See, You see where I'm going now? So with Boston, I want to do what FaZe did 10 years ago, guys. I, I'm very competitive. I, I'm a very, very competitive person. So I know the keys. I know how it works. And I have all the opportunity with Boston to make these things happen now. So we got a lot of things in store. We got to get the pull-ups done. We got to get this world championship ceremony done for all these players and teams. We're not even going to call it world championships though. Cause I feel like that's disingenuous to the 2013 and on winners. They're just called call of duty champions. Simply put, like, I don't think they should be called call of duty world champions because it wasn't called a world championship. That's just my opinion though. That's how I feel. I'm very literal with stuff. So I think that we could do it with Boston. I think we could definitely have a small Nick group of not only a team, but players and content creators as well. And really grow an organization to new heights. Just like what FaZe did back in the day. That's how it should be. I mean, I think that's the best way for something to grow. When you try to overextend it too much and, and have too many people, it gets a little bit too complicated. So you have to have insane loyalty, trust, and commitment. You have to have a collaboration of trust, commitment, and mindset. Visions. you got to have good visions. Good ideas. And you got to do IRL stuff. Gaming can only get you so far. Look, gaming, like I've seen it myself. I've seen it at the highest level in Call of Duty. Being a gaming Call of Duty creator can only get you so far. If you really want to achieve something at a new level, you have to do IRL. It has to. You have to combine IRL with the gaming. You got to do both. If you do both, it's going to definitely do really well. The more you add IRL stuff and fun stuff in and incorporate it back to gaming, that's how you really grow. Like... At least that's what I've seen. So that's what I definitely want to do with Boston. I'm going to be a lot more active with Boston moving forward. After these pull-ups, obviously. Because right now, I, I can't leave my house for a few reasons. But I definitely can't leave my house because of my pull-up training right now. So I'm going to get my pull-up world record and then move on. And we're going to we're gonna put everyone on Boston on. The podcast should be happening in early May. We already have all the assets made. We have everything ready to go. Um, definitely early May, like a month or so before the pull-up board record, the pull-up board record will happen, but it's a very detailed process. It's, it's a lot of work. The pull-ups is the hardest thing I've done in my life. So I can't focus on the content game the way I want to. So I just kind of sit here and do these little streams and yap to y'all cause it's fun and it, you know, why not? It's easy work. This is like, this is the easiest shit in the world. Sitting here and yapping on a camera is bullshit. <laughs> like, this is so fun and easy, man. <laughs> Anyone could do this shit. It's cool. <laughs> Hi, Nakardi. Welcome. But yeah, I don't know. That that guy, dude, this guy, man, I don't know. Burners. Burners coming from insecure places, I think. Twain ball, man. Told you so pretty much they didn't want you and told you to sit the fuck down. No, Twain ball. So look, Adam Morrison runs Boston. And... I made it very clear to Adam Morrison that I don't think I should play anymore. And he said, you can do whatever you want, dude. If you want to keep playing, play. Your discipline admired is inspirational. Thank you, DMO. And I just said, duh, dude. Like, I don't think this is what we should do. Like, dude, I want to I wanna give everything I can to Boston in a completely different way. I don't think this is the right way of going about it. I, I think that even if I earn my way into the league and I fry and I win MVPs and challengers and I get on the main team and I'm frying in the league and we're winning and I'm making these crazy plays. It's not going to grow our org the best way. We could grow the org in a better way if I'm not a player. So he was like, all right, well, if you ever want to play, then just let me know. And I was like, dude, you're the best. Like you're the fucking literally the best. You always have my back. Like I just always wanted someone. I always felt like no one had my back. Even when I was running shit, I felt like no one had my back. So now I feel like I have someone who has my back and that feels really nice. I think only a few people in my life have my back. My, I don't, I don't really feel like FaZe ever had my back. They tried to though. I think they had good intentions. I mean, they gave me the second team, which was nice. They hired a CEO that just lied to everybody. That guy was a piece of shit. And then, um, 
a little bit of pushing people away, a little bit of not having trust in people to just do what they say they'll do. I'm just very intense and I'm crazy a little bit, guys. You know, I'm a very literal person. I always say something and I always try to execute what I say I'm going to do. So I think my biggest problem is that I always try to hold people to that same standard. And then because I try to hold people to that standard, people try to double down on holding me on that standard. And that doesn't go anywhere good. That's not healthy either. So that's something that I've learned throughout my 20s. And as I'm turning 30 in August, that's definitely something that I'm going to apply towards everything that I do. You don't always have to honor your word to the highest level. Like it's okay to be a human being and just chill the fuck out, you know, like... <laughs>